Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome once again to another segment talking this time insha'Allah about fasting or asya or also asawm in Arabic one of the pillars of Islam the fourth pillar actually um, Allah the Almighty refers to this pillar in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah as saying يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Well, this ayah means that fasting was ordained on Muslims and also the nations before us, on the Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on the followers of other prophets. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you, ordained upon you, as it was ordained upon those who were before you. So the people of Prophet Jesus, the people of Prophet Moses and Abraham, fasting was known before. Yes, as people have changed many of the religions, they also have changed the format of fasting which Allah have uh, prescribed initially. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fasting is to be done through certain number of days. So now we're talking about the mandatory fasting or the farida of fasting, which is prescribed in the ayah as شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ The mandatory fasting in Islam is during one of the lunar months which is known as the month of Ramadan. This month Allah chose it to be the month of fasting because of the virtue of revealing the Qur'an on this month. The beginning of the revelation of the Qur'an took place during the month of Ramadan. It is the most blessed month. And fasting, as also the following ayah described, uh, should be offered from the morning till the evening, till sunset. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ you eat and you drink throughout the entire night until it becomes clear to you that it's dawn. ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Then you continue fasting until the evening which is the sunset. Breaking our fast on sunset allows us to do everything which was restricted during fasting. While fasting we're not allowed to eat, to drink or have any intimate relationship or even the introduction, which may lead to an intimate relationship. This is our fa as far as fasting, which is the mandatory fasting. The Prophet ﷺ said, fasting is a shield, is a protection, is a jannah. It protects the person against indulging into sins. It helps the person to lower his gaze, to restrain his tongue, not to talk about bad things. To be a better individual, in addition to there is a great psychological effect of fasting on the fasting people. When they taste the hunger and thirst, it clicks in their mind that there are many people who are hungry, not necessarily because they are fasting, but because they cannot find any food. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ encourages us to offer food for the fasting individuals. To the extent that he said, whenever you feed a fasting person to break his fast on, you will get a reward similar to his reward of fasting. Yet that would not affect or diminish the reward of either one of you. It is a month of generosity. We are ordered to be very generous during the month of Ramadan. Give extra charity. There is a particular charity by the end of the month to be distributed by every person who possesses enough food for a day and night. They have to give food 
to others on behalf of themselves and on behalf of every family member who's under their guardianship. Pass on the food to the poor. So the poor will keep collecting food until they themselves have food which is plenty. So they too have to give to others and so on. Look at the integrity of the entire community presented in the form of giving Sadaqatul Fitr following fasting, which is one of the greatest acts of worship. When the person restrains himself from eating and drinking the lawful things, drinking water is lawful, but during Ramadan, the day of Ramadan, you can drink. You cannot eat bread. You cannot eat anything. That makes it easier for the believer to avoid the haram during other days. If it was affordable to restrain from eating entirely, from drinking entirely for so many hours during the day and from talking bad, then, well, I guess it's easier to avoid the haram throughout uh, the year. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has appointed a gate in heaven and he named it the gate of ar rayyan This gate is designated for the fasting people only. So on the day of judgment, they shall enter from this gate and no one else will be able to enter from this gate. May Allah the Almighty make us amongst them. And uh, during fasting, there are many merits. Take for innocence. At the time of breaking your fast, you have a dua, an invocation, a prayer, which will not be rejected. So seize this opportunity. Furthermore, every day you fast for the sake of Allah, it keeps you distant from the fire of hell, 70,000 years. 70 years. 70 years it will keep you away from the fire of hell for fasting each day. That applies to the fard and to the voluntary fasting. And that will take us to the other category of fasting, which is why do Muslims tend to fast besides Ramadan? There are some other virtuous days which the Prophet ﷺ recommended their fasting. To fast for innocence on the 10th of Muharram. Why? Believe it or not. We're fasting on the day to give thanks to Allah that he saved Prophet Moses and the children of Israel who believed in him from the Pharaoh. And he drowned the Pharaoh and his horse on that day. So we fast because of that. On the day of Arafah, the day of Arafah is when people go for Hajj, the ninth day of the month of Muharram. It is highly recommended to fast. The Prophet ﷺ said, fasting on the day of Arafah would expiate the sins of two years, the past year and a year to come, while fasting on the 10th of Muharram would expiate all the sins of the past year. Allah is the most merciful. Allah is the oft forgiving. Allah wants to forgive us our sins and bring us closer to Him by giving us these virtuous days and these beautiful occasions. That's it. No, there is still furthermore fasting, voluntary fasting. Uh, in one hadith, one of the companions by the name Abu Huraira radiyallahu an narrated that. He said, my intimate friend, my best companion, advised me with three things. One of the three advices was to fast three days on every lunar month. Why three days? What kind of three days? It is recommended to be on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every lunar month. This is when the moon becomes, gets to be a full moon. Okay. Why three days? Because Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, and the Prophet informed us that Allah rewards for each good deed at least 10 times more. So if he fast three days times 10, at least, that is 30 it is similar to if you have been fasting for 30 days or the whole month. And if you do this on a regular basis, you fast three days every month, you get the reward of fasting for 30 days. It is similar to if you have been fasting for the entire year round. Great. Also, the Prophet ﷺ used to fast every week on Mondays and Thursdays. These are virtuous days. Uh, especially Thursday because our deeds... The weekly report will be presented before Allah the Almighty. And he said, I like my deeds to be presented before Allah while fasting. I wish we had more time to speak about some of the virtues of fasting. 
But once again, we're out of time. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.